Welcome to the Third Space Podcast, episode number 25. This time we've got a fun episode for you. In fact, I would say if this was a Sesame Street podcast, it would be brought to you by the letter M, because our topics this time are things such as minimalism, multivitamins, and moral minding. Yes, we have another segment of Mind Your Morals this time. In fact, that takes up the bulk of the podcast. It's a interesting scenario about a vengeful genie that wants to destroy all the Christmas presents in the world. Uh, and there are a number of moral quandaries that fall out of that scenario. So we, uh, we put Daniel's moral character to the test. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it was definitely fun to talk about. And without further ado, I will let the podcast begin. Enjoy. Here we are in third space, Bennett. We are. We made it to third space with no musical yeah. uh, introductions. I thought I'd keep it clean and simple now. You know, minimalism and stuff. Minimalism it, is a thing. Just, yes, it is. It's clean. Honestly, I'm not a fan of minimalism, I don't think. Well, it, I guess it depends on the area. In terms of graphic design, especially lately, minimalism is like... All all computer iconography and everything is all minimalist. And I don't like it. I think it's a reaction to how busy everything is and we're in information overload and so even just seeing a clean simple shapes is a relief in some ways like that i suspect there really is a relationship between our being overwhelmed by everything and like oh there's just like a simple thing but then it gets too cheeky for me too if it's just some abstract shape and i'm supposed to like i could use more information sometimes you know right well one one of the things that bugs me is that you know, a lot of interfaces, especially web interfaces now, they just, you know, throw all their own icons and symbols in there and they're all sleek and minimalist and they're not intuitive. Like, you don't mm -hmm. know what they do. Like, it'll be, you know, some little exclamation point next to a parallelogram and you're like, well, okay, I don't know what this is. And sometimes they don't even have tooltips. So when you hover over it, you still don't know what it is. You just have to click it to find out. Like, what, what, what happened to just labeling things? I don't right. know. Right. And the same, okay, so if you copyright, like, let's just say we were like, all right, let's, uh, let's make our symbol a banana, like a minimalist banana, you know, yeah. with only one shade line. Right. In it. It's like, and then can you really claim that that banana shape and that we designed it, so therefore, like, we can copyright, it, it feels uncomfortable, the, the more minimalist, the more, or I guess the less production in some ways. And so how can you yeah. claim that this is, you know, intellectual property or whatever? Yeah, that does seem weird to trademark a banana. <laughs> like or just like just a minimalist shape like you know and say that's yeah. ours you can't use that we did a banana <laughs> well i mean i know there have been cases where companies have tried to trademark single words you know like they have a game or a book or a, some other property named something with a word and they try to trademark it like the the one that comes to mind to me i forget the company but i, I guess it was bethesda or something they tried to trademark the word scrolls uh I guess because Whoa. of Elder Scrolls, the game series, yeah. and they just wanted, they were like, oh, we'll just uh, trademark the word scrolls, so nothing else can be called <laughs> scrolls, uh, which it's is actually really like, weird. When kids ask me, what, how many words before I need to put it in quotation marks, like how, if it's two words, or for instance, there's a short story we read uh, called Miriam by Truman Capote, and like, there's this hello moment at the end, uh, and, and obviously, hello is just a greeting, and does it need to be in quotes? Do you need to cite this? And it's this weird gray area of like, okay, if it's over three words, or if the phrase is coined by a particular person, like, do you need to attribute it? Or, um, do you know what I mean? Like, it can get, in, there's a little bit of a gray area of like, are you quoting someone's ideas and thoughts? And right. if, it's a, if it's just a small portion, like, what is worth quoting? Right. Uh, yeah, I never, whenever I was writing, um, I, I never bothered with quotes, really. Uh, like, maybe I was just lazy about it, but I would, whether I was paraphrasing or quoting, it didn't matter to me. I would just throw the reference at the end of the sentence or paragraph anyway. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't matter if I'm quoting two words yeah. or three words or paraphrasing a bunch, whatever. Just cite it at the end. Do you remember the WCW guy that they would hire for uh, main events? Dime, and Diamond Dallas Page? No. <laughs> Diamond Dallas Page, my favorite wrestler. 
<laughs> yeah. No, the guy who would go, let's get ready to rumble. Yeah. Like for the main yeah, event, yeah, yeah. he co- he uh, copyrighted that, and so no one could say, let's get ready to rumble. That's five it, words. I just except you, out. apparently. Yeah. No. That, that actually, if we are we were gonna super have to famous, we might have to go edit that out. <laughs> yeah. Wow. YouTube's well. getting strange about it. People will. Uh, sing little jingles and they'll go oh, we can't do that because of copyright i've noticed like several channels i've watched will go ah, that's... we got to edit that out or i can't sing that or once you get into and that's another gray area it, if you hum it for more than how many beats until you're in copyright territory and it's just silly someone that's singing the song it's really obnoxious like i i'd like to think the pendulum is too far in one direction yeah. and we'll, we'll reach something I, yeah i think so too i mean imagine like if we could if we could take the the youtube humming thing and move it to a different area of of art like could you imagine if you painted a screaming person and they said oh you can't paint screaming people because like van gogh already did that or (laughs) you know like you paint some stars in the sky no nope sorry you have to trash this painting you can't sell it or show it or do anything with it because someone already did it before like Come on. It's, it, it, yeah, the reality is everything is derivative to some extent. So at what point are you... Well, so what do you think of the guy that was able to... Like, look, he really did brand... That, that's clearly a, a phrase that let's get ready to rumble, like is a, something that we all know. And his voice was distinct and he would carry it out in such a way. But but also, how, how can you own a phrase like that? Well, I mean, where is he now? I mean, I don't see him around anymore. So obviously that strategy of preserving that phrase didn't work out well for him. I'm not um, sure. He did boxing mass- matches and, and all sorts of things, too. Like he did a lot of hype events, and he, I'm sure he made great money. And like being able to copyright that probably did work out for him in the moment anyway. Uh, yeah, I in just, the moment. I find it strange. Like, it, it just seems like... You know, if you if you have an iconic voice, it seems like his voice was really the iconic thing. Uh, the phrase, there's nothing that special about it. I mean, Royal Rumble was the event, and so he said, you know, let's get ready to rumble. So, yeah, but the phrase was nothing that special. It was about his voice. And so, like, it seems like if he was a savvy businessman or, or voice guy, or announcer, whatever he was, then he would, you know, he would beef up his repertoire with more phrases, and he would become <laughs> the icon. You know, like... Like, the guy who voices Mario, he, you know, it's a me, Mario. Like, that phrase, you don't copyright just that phrase. Like, it's his whole voice. It's his voice and his acting and his being that's, that's, that's what people pay for when and they pay for Mario's voice. you can't replicate that, right? I mean, a lot of people do replicate that, but so what? Like, they're replicating the sound of a voice. They still hire Charles Martin, that's his name. They still hire him for Nintendo games. They don't hire wonder- the, the copy guy. I, I still, so yeah, I disagree with the idea of him getting that copyrighted, but I would smirk at someone saying that phrase and trying to mimic him. And, and I would be mad if I were in his position going, man, they just hired some, you know, some guy off the street to come in and say that when they're trying to get my vibe and trying to get my energy and all of that. So I would feel ripped off to some degree. And and so be better so come up with a better phrase or offer a better price price. or do whatever like you think you're you think you own the phrase let's get ready to rumble like who do you think you are (laughs) man like honestly like that that annoys me like i can i can respect like i think there is a place for copyright uh and intellectual property like i think there's a place for that but you just can't get carried away. You can't stake out everything and own everything. I find that yeah, because obnoxious. What's, it's like, what's intellectual about it? Like, yeah, you could say that you got famous for it, but how can you say that you... Like, if someone coins some edu- educational jargon thing and, and or whatever, like, they coin this term that means this thing, there's actual intellectual uh, property behind it, right? Like, this is an idea that gets implemented, and this is how you should carry forth in your classroom and so i could understand like that is uh you, you should be able to i don't know brand that to yeah some well degree. like for example if you have the myers-briggs typology indicator like yes. that thing that no you want that copyrighted or, or trademarked or whatever so that no one else can just say oh no no this is the myers-briggs typology indicator and you know that way you don't have those things conflict but 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 copywriting a phrase that a guy says, that's just... That's... Especially just a hype phrase, you know. But yeah. he almost sings it. So at what point is it musical and... Uh, well, if that's know. the case, then why why doesn't 
any copier just claimed that they're parodying it because parody is explicitly protected. Huh. Hadn't thought of that. Yeah. So, uh, what are your, what are your thoughts on multivitamins? <laughs> um, <laughs> multivitamins. I'm working on my transitions, by the way, just trying to, you know, get smooth there. <laughs> yeah. You're doing good. Making much progress. Um, I don't have strong feelings on multivitamins. I guess I would say broadly that, you know, it's a good, it's a good thing, uh, to get your dose of all the different vitamins that you need. Uh, you probably, a lot of the stuff in the multivitamin you don't need. And, but you know, a lot of vitamins, if you get too much, it doesn't matter. You just pee it out. So, um, but then you're paying for expensive pee. Like, so that's who right. Cares? Like, you are. I'm just wondering yeah. how much of it's just kind of, eh, this is a waste oh, and how much is, I take a multivitamin and I feel good. It's a routine. And well, I think when there's you say, probably placebo effect going on. Yeah, I was going to ask, when you say you feel good, is it oh. you feel good that you're taking care of your health, or you feel good because you take a multivitamin and you attribute the good feeling to the multivitamin, or what? I think it's probably psychological. Like, I have this routine in the morning, and I take it, and uh, I'm investing in my health. And so when I started working out and eating healthier, and the multivitamin was just another small layer of filling in the gaps, perhaps, right? Like, because I don't know, I don't think, I don't. I'm trying to eat healthy, but I don't sit there and count every calorie or look at every, like, did I get this many fruits and veggies? Did I get everything? Did I did I check all the boxes? And I feel like the multivitamin might just help in small areas like that, fill in some of the gaps. And so, uh, it, so I don't know, because like, honestly, I can't say I started taking it and then, you know, like Popeye, I, my arms <laughs> got bigger and I just was like, woohoo! feeling great and focused and energetic and all of the things, you know, I have no idea. So I just don't know if I'm wasting, I mean, what, like 15 bucks for, uh, you know, 80 or 90 capsules. So whatever, like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you probably are wasting your money, but, um, I mean, it depends on your diet, uh, and exercise and sunlight exposure and all that stuff to, as to whether or not you're getting sufficient nutrients. Mo I mean, most of the time, if you have a, a deficiency, then, you notice it. You have health problems that crop up because of your deficiency in whatever area. Um, so uh, you probably would have noticed if you had a problem with it. Uh, that's what I would say. And and but you know it depends on what's in your multivitamin as well. Like mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's all you know vitamin A, vitamin C, um, vitamin D. And Zinc, and specifically a man's multi multivitamin. That's how I know it's oh. good because I'm also a man. You right. Know? Right. Yeah, so it's making you more manly as well. Yeah, something like that. I feel a little more manly. Right. I mean, uh, look, I don't have any issue with it. Like, how much did you say it was for how many capsules? Uh, I, I mean, I'm like 15 bucks for like 80 or something like that. So. And you take one not, a day? Not some, yeah, one a day. Yeah, I mean, that's, well, uh, whatever. I mean, obviously that's not going to break the bank and it's not unhealthy, so if, fine. And if it does fill in a couple of gaps, like, I don't know, maybe you're not getting enough magnesium or something and the multivitamin has it, then it's probably fine. I suspect if you were to look at data, you would get skewed results if you were to say like vitamin takers versus like a non-multivitamin taker and vitamin multivitamin takers, and then the multivitamin takers would be disproportionately healthier, but like, you know, false correlation kind of thing. Like, because what I just said is like, I introduce that into my diet along with workout and you know wanting like a conscious wanting to be healthier so my guess is you get screwed, skewed results does that make sense yes definitely i mean people who take multivitamins are concerned with their health and being concerned with your health has positive health effects so uh like people who don't take multivitamins you're just going to get a mishmash of everyone people who do take multivitamins you can almost be guaranteed that they're concerned about their health in some some way or, or other it reminds me of that um, uh, USA Weekly or whatever, whatever that newspaper is that published some finding where if you listen to uh, classical music, if your baby listens to classical music, you'll be smarter or it'll be smarter, the child will. And so everyone was doing this and then they found that it was just correlation. It just meant that <laughs> yeah. people who care people about their baby. To classical music. Yeah, that and like, so it doesn't make you smarter, but like it also shows if you say do this and it will help your baby guess who's paying attention the people who care about their babies and just ah. caring about your baby and right. trying to do things is uh, going to be as positively correlated with 
their upbringing. So I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Like there was nothing to it. Like people were doing the whole headphones on the belly and like when they were very young, just playing it in their room a lot. But it was just attentive parents. Like that was the correlation there is attentive parents not the musical notes inspiring the babies to become little beethovens and box and stuff like that yeah that makes sense i think that's an important lesson to learn about uh, trying to correlate things all kinds of things um uh, with respect to the vitamins how much do you trust your vitamin maker uh so i i've been a little bit of a sucker recently for I, I, you know, I don't know. I guess I trust them a lot because I'm taking it. So I trust them wholly <laughs> in the sense that I buy it and I take it and I put it in my body. I looked on Amazon and did a quick like 30 minute search. And this had like, you know, like 8,000 reviews and it had, and it claimed to be pure veg, vegetable based, um, very hippie. And so I'm a sucker for the ethos surrounding all that organic hippie nonsense. I just, I read it and I go, and like all these really, really picky people, they were like, I was looking for this, this, and this, and it fit all of my needs. And I'm like, God, you're so uptight. But like, if it fit the uptight person's needs, it's certainly going to fit my less uptight uh, needs. And so I just got this multivitamin. <laughs> I just wonder how easy it would be for, you know, a company to basically make a vitamin C tablet. You know, vitamin C is nothing. I mean, it's just whatever. No one, no one, it hurts no one. And it's cheap, and most people don't have, you know, they, they already get enough. So, and you just fill your pill with vitamin C and sprinkle in some, I don't know, black pepper or whatever else. I don't know. Just <laughs> some filler, yeah. Yeah, just sprinkle in some nonsense and tell people it's a multivitamin, and there you go, make some money, make some cheap money. Like, I just wonder how many, I mean, you always, or at least you used to see, you know, ads for stupid pills, you know, like, oh, get your pills for whatever. And, like, it just seems like it's, it's ripe for scams. Uh. Well, yeah, a step toward scamminess that I'm also sort of susceptible are these like pills that'll say like focus and mi- like mindfulness and like help you concentrate a little bit or, or uh, yeah. And so, and they'll say, oh, it has this, you know, redwood bark extract or some nonsense <laughs> like that. Right, and, yeah. um, Char grilled bark extract. <laughs> I think I actually bought a pill once that was about bark and it was like uh, some, you know, citing some studies that showed some positive correlation, uh, whatever, like yeah. all, just all nonsense. But like, I do like, it, do you think the second it gets into concentration and focus that that gets way away from the anything scientific? Not, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, there are some amino acids and stuff you can take that, you know, if you're deficient, then yeah, your focus can be affected or your sleep quality can be affected and filling that deficiency can help fix the problem. Like, I mean, it's not all nonsense. I just think that, or I just worry that it would be easy to lie, you know, to lie with your product. I mean, I'm sure there's some approval process, but I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people, you know, don't have to go through the approval process or just don't and they still sell their product. Yeah, if I recall, even when I bought this, it had a web like the website was nice and said things like, "Here's what makes us different. We go through three independent testers that demonstrate we actually put in what we say we put in, stuff like that." So that indicates that what you suspect is that I think maybe there's a lot of vitamin companies that don't do that. <laughs> and yeah, it I'm not even. Me. I, I have no idea about these other. Te- I didn't go verify or really care that much, but. Um, I liked that they told me that. <laughs> that's that's why I stick with the tried and true Flintstones chewables. <laughs> you know, like those guys have been around. Like if they were faking, then they would have discovered it by now. They've they been around been since yeah. they've been around since like ten thousand BC or something, <laughs> approximately. <laughs> so approximately. whatever the Flintstone era was, yeah, right, yeah. So that's that. You ought to go with that. You should try that out. The Flintstone age. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how are your morals feeling today? Um, I, I could, they're feeling pretty solid. I could use some testing. If yeah. You, uh, you think, you think you could, uh, pay mind to those, pay mind to your morals a little bit? I would love to, to mind the, my morals. Yeah. I'd love to mind my morals. All right, then I've got the perfect thing for this situation. It's called mind your morals. Um, it's the mind your morals. Ooh. Segment. 
Let's do one. It's been a while since we did uh did it, did did it, did it, did it, did it my <laughs> yo morals. <laughs> yeah. I had to get a jingle in at some point. No, that's good. I think I like the segment jingles. <laughs> I, I I I look on those positively. So. All right. We should get we should get like a button, a board where you press things and they go boing and yeah, just you know yeah. the sort the soundboard. of uh, I think really you cheesy soundboard. I would You mentioned yeah, that before. Before. <laughs> I'd like I, that. You know, I wouldn't say no to that. I wouldn't say no to having one of those. May- or maybe we could just get the physical items that make the noises, like a really <laughs> funny spring and boing, 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 the thing, and actually do Yeah, the thing, or the zzz, 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 and it's like a stick with something around the top that moves when you spin you, it. Or the slide whistle. Yeah, I'd like all that. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll go on a shopping spree for sound effects. We'll be podcast Foley artists. <laughs> all right, make me my my morals. All right, this is a spicy one. I'm only going to do one, and it's going to be a spicy one. Ooh, um, I like sexy and, morality. And, and there's a bit of a setup for it, so uh, so okay. let me uh, let me read you the, the setup. And we'll, we'll see if you understand the setup, and then we can move along. So, Got it. you're walking along the beach one day when you find a golden phonograph washed up on the shore. Mm, it's half buried like in this. the sand. I know you yeah. would. Obviously, you pick it up and you rub its golden cone. When you do... <laughs> <laughs> when you do, you're sucked into a micro dimension inside the phonograph, which you find is inhabited by a vengeful genie, questionable moral integrity. The genie says, because he brought you into the phonograph, he's bound by the genie charter to grant you a single wish, anything you want. How does that sound? Oh, okay, I mean, this is very basic setup. A vengeful genie, I mean, I'm in the phonograph with him. Yeah, he sucked you into a micro dimension inside of it. Um, and he but, says, I'm bound to give you one wish. Right. Sounds pretty okay. good. So, I, I'm, I think I'm following. There's nothing tricky so far. Okay. But there's a catch. He explains the, the reason why he's in the phonograph is that in the distant past, he was, he was actually given the phonograph as a Christmas present, and it was cursed, and it sucked him inside the phonograph and imprisoned him. So now he wants revenge, and he's plotting to try to escape the phonograph and destroy all Christmas presents during the year of his release, the upcoming year of his release. Um, he's really mad, so it's not just going to be Christmas presents. It's going to be Hanukkah presents, Kwanzaa presents, non-denominational Any gift-giving pre- yes. presents. All presents are going to be destroyed. And what happens when these presents are destroyed is that as soon as they're unwrapped, they just kind of dissolve into their base components, and some of the components break apart too. Like they just kind of, like the presents themselves, the wrapped boxes all stay under the tree, nice and neat. But as soon as they're opened up, and right when the joy starts to register on the face of the recipient, the, then the present just kind of collapses into its stuff components. So really, okay. tra- really traumatic. Anyway, that's what he's planning to do to all Christmas presents. And he um, has the power to do this. Yes, he definitely he okay. has. The power to do this, no question about it. It's a really powerful genie. Um, but he explains, uh, uh, but he says he can only do this if he's freed from the phonograph prison, which he can't do by himself. So he's not powerful enough to free himself from the phonograph. Um, he also explains with an evil grin that you can't escape either unless you wish to, be, to escape, um, using your single wish to escape the phonograph. Uh, but he says he's not totally evil, and he really wants to be freed so he can destroy all of the Christmas presents. So if you use your single wish to free him instead of freeing you, he will not only free you using his power once he's out, but he'll also give you some other boon, something else extra um, outside of uh, you know, just freeing yourself. Um, alternately, you can use your, si- your single wish to simply free yourself. You leave nothing, um, and you get to go about your merry way. The genie stays trapped in the phonograph. But he'll capture the next passerby uh, who spies the phonograph, and eventually he'll find someone to take his bargain. So that's the setup. Does it make sense to you? It does. Man. And so that, there, there's the little catch, right? Like, that's, oh, well, all Christmas presents or all presents in that time of year will likely be destroyed should I just get the gift. Um Right, and so I have a bunch of a bunch of situations that specify what this boon is, what the thing is that he'll give to you, um, and that this that's where the decision comes in on your part. 
But the setup is that, yes, you're trapped in here. Uh, you can decide to essentially walk away and, you know, put the moral burden on whoever he captures next. Or um, you can free the genie and take whatever he gives you. Um, so, so do you want to hear the first uh, the first proposal? Yeah, so you don't want me to respond. To, yeah, I'll just hear the proposals. Yeah, I mean, you can't really make a decision right now because you don't know what he's going to give you, right? I mean, right, that's may- maybe you could. Maybe you don't need to know any more information. Uh, but but that would really mess up the, this mind of morals. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, then let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the the boon that the genie offers you at first he says that uh, if you if you free him if you use your wish to free him then he'll he'll free you of course uh, but it'll also give you a single cash payment of ten thousand dollars uh so how about so that do i take it um, so so do you free him or do you free yourself i am inclined to walk away from this you know Every it'll be interesting to see all the different the different scenarios you present because I don't I don't want to participate I don't want my name to be on I don't want to be associated with the amount of destruction like the way my moral code operates is like how much harm am I inflicting on other people uh, and whether or not they quote unquote deserved it and so absolutely other people do not deserve in any way to have their presence you know ruined. Um, that that amount, if I can quantify that amount of harm, it's it ranges from small to large f- for each individual. But the very fact that it's everyone uh, makes it just a gargantuan amount of harm being caused. And so, even to get close to balance, what I must receive must be gargantuan in nature. But I'm just a single individual. Um, the only little catch that is like, well, this is going to happen anyway, but I'm afraid that that is justification. And that's like, that's the pitfall that we all fall into. It's like, well, you know, I'll do this evil thing because I'll get some benefit and someone else was going to do it anyway. And I don't like that. I find that actually immoral reasoning itself. So I don't, I don't accept that as an argument. I reject it. And so I will not, so I'm definitely walking away from the 10,000, uh, because ten thousand measly bucks, it, although like, hey, I like ten thousand dollars to compromise myself that greatly. It just it just didn't happen. No. So what if what if your name your name is not attached to this at all? No, no one, one, kn- no, one knows. no one in the world will ever know that you, you know, carried out this bargain. That, that, that's not really. I don't. This isn't a social like oh like curse curse daniel for this like no no like this is morality is so much greater than like how i'm being perceived it's like i i did this and i would know and that's that's what i mean so i don't i don't even mean it about them so yeah that that has no effect for me okay i mean you I, you at least i'm trying it, so. to be logically consistent i'm trying to be i mean it sounds like i'm just being such a nice guy or at no, least no, no, trying... that's the point that's the point of mind your morals is to examine what the right thing to do is i guess so. i have to qualify too is that like i have solid or like i like to think i have consistent and solid morals and reasoning for them at the same time you know the abstract and the and the realities are different like like have i've been immoral in my life uh, even though i have like i've gone against my own moral code so what that 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 disharmony is super interesting to me like why why would i do that when i don't believe in it so um there's a chance I take the ten thousand dollars in reality if this were if this was a real genie, <laughs> but I really don't think so. I absolutely don't <clears throat> think so. So now I'm walking away easily, like not even like I would feel good about walking away. Not this would not be painful for me. Okay, what about if he offered you a million dollars? I mean, <clears throat> then it's it would be something I look back, like with ten thousand. I wouldn't even remember the incident that well obviously it's a very memorable incident i just mean i wouldn't lie <laughs> awake at night missing that ten thousand dollars when you say a million i'm i'm still healthily walking away but like i'm gonna think about that in bed sometimes especially when you know presumably my presence dissolve one day and go some jerk did this and like i could just everything would be the same i could just have a million dollars yes i would that would right. make me think about it frequently um I, i'm i'm still 
I think I'm still walking, at least in the abstract, I'm definitely walking away from my consistent morality. Like, in rea- if I'm really trying to think about my behavior, I still think I might walk I mean, away. Uh, what's, I want to press you. What's the distinction between talking about it in abstract and uh, everything we're talking about right now is abstract and hypothetical. So yeah, how, yeah. how can you have two different answers? Uh, like, are you just... Are you just well, trying I, to be honest and saying I, that I might really be tempted and so I might not be as strong as I think I am? Or what are you telling me when that's you say... That's all I'm saying is, I, yes, I'm just saying I'm not as, I might not be as strong as I like to pretend. It's easy sitting here with you and discussing abstract and go, I'd walk away and I can say that and hold my chest high. Um, I'm trying to be honest about my jerkishness or whatever, my, my ability to be compromised. Because a million dollars is so transformative to my life. Um, then I start wanting to justify. Then I start looking for reasons to say, you know, this is going to happen anyway. And like, I'm allowed, I, I start trying to wedge in reasons to do it. Uh, but I, I mean, okay. I, I think enough. I'd walk away. I really okay. do. All right. So what you, what if instead he offered you the total value, cash value of all the presents that were destroyed? Oh, uh, ho, ho, ho. And if I'm and if I theoretically made it my mission, I could go, you know, I could restore the sig- what I deemed significant. I almost would never be able to do it in, in its entirety. Oh my gosh, um, that that was my thought, right? Like you give me it all, I can say, oh, I can just kind of return all the gifts. But then if everything walks even, then or comes out even, why would I even do that? Well, uh, I, I mean, it would be like the actual. Actually, trying to replace all of those destroyed presents would be a, a nightmare. It would be practically oh, yeah. impossible. Right. But you could do some kind of, you know, charity thing. You know, like you could, you could use that money in a way that maybe you thought was moral that offset like, the the moral right. harm. Some Robin Hood style, like yeah, I did this thing that I shouldn't have taken, what I shouldn't have, but I'm gonna try and offset it. Right. I didn't. Uh, I didn't look and try to get a value for this, but. You know, you'll you'll just have to imagine. I'm sure it's a a billion dollar more than a yeah. billion dollars. I kind of hate. I did not think you'd be able to tempt me, but I think I'm really I'm tempted to take this in reality, especially as I start to justify and going. Well, this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen anyway, and we're talking about billion. So at least I can offset. I can start some chair. I can like. I can devote. You know. I can say I'm going to make my life's work about sort of restoring the harm I've caused. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I well, mean, I mean, think about. Uh, I won't. I won't. I won't interject my well, morals. Well, then let me let me morals. say this too, because some of this is like okay. So a middle class or wealthy family, their iPad gift dissolves, which is pretty terrible. But they're not like these are gifts. And so what's interesting about this is gifts are luxury by definition. Mm-hmm. Um, these aren't. St- like starving families who are like waiting to you're not taking food out of the mouths of starving families it's different it's like you're eliminating uh some luxury pleasure right and so if i am uh getting the billions of dollars i mean i would say billions of dollars we're talking about all get i mean billions of billions like i would all of a sudden own I i would all of a sudden be the richest person in the world and all of this and so uh you know what like I'm surprised at myself, but I think I might take this because now that I'm thinking about, well, I'm rethinking the harm caused because right, I was right, thinking right. the harm was so great, but the harm is harming a luxury thing. So well, lots that, of, I'm causing lots of disappointment, but yes. I'm not causing like, but like that's disappointment the, is just feasible here. So well, that that's the hook of this Mind Your Morals is how, how does harm compound, uh, you know, inflicting harm on one person that you can you can confidently say that that's wrong and you wouldn't do it, or or maybe the benefit you get is great enough to inflict that harm on the one person, but how does it compound when there are ten people, a hundred people, a thousand people, a million people, all people? Like how does that how does that compound? How does uh, it scale or compound? Like yeah, I don't. It's all disappointment. Now I'm trying to think of the worst case scenarios. I mean because. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, at first, I, you think it's the biggest item, right? Like someone buys this, you know, expensive piece of jewelry. But like, and maybe this is not moral of me or not morally consistent, but like a really expensive shiny rock that you got as a, a extra nice gift. Like, like, 
Like, you aren't robbed of... Yeah, you're just not robbed of something... I don't want. Well, who I am mean, I to say that that's significant or not? I mean, it's expensive. <laughs> exactly. It's expensive, you, but I mean, I think I think if if I understand your moral code correctly, and I think I do, then you're you're just uh, you're acknowledging that. Yep, I'm gonna do a lot of bad stuff here. Like I'm gonna allow bad things to happen, but the good that happens to me is so good that it's worth it. Like that's the calculation that you're that you're going through right now, right? But that's so tough to say I'm, I'm doing lots of harm that ranges for everybody and then I'm experiencing a wild yes I'm yeah that's a good way like I'm but like it's so good to me and I can pledge that I will not make it just me I can pledge and be earnest in that and actually carry out and do a lot of uplifting things so and this is kind of a gross way to think about it but like I now have the ability to reallocate resources uh, in a way that I see more beneficial. So like, because I'm in the possession of power. Um, and that's, uh, mm-hmm. it's not my position to do. I, I mean, that it's immoral just because I believe I can reallocate better than it maybe currently exists. Like, what if that's true, by the way? What if I can? Sh- is it still immoral? Um, <laughs> the, the age I, old I, question, do the ends justify I'm, the means? Yes, yes. I mean, it really is an age old question. And so, um, so I'll let you I'll let you ponder a little bit while we step through yeah. some more uh, some some more situations. Um, so okay, so what if instead of destroying the presents, uh, the genie instead just scrambles them all up randomly, so no one gets what was intended? Uh, would you would that change your answer to the ten thousand dollars or million dollars or the other or the total sum? Uh, it of would presents? not change to the ten thousand. Yeah, so it's not changing the ten thousand. The million becomes tempting. I think at the billion or billions or all that wealth, um, it eases my pain to do it a little more. I'm still not sure, but like, certainly there's not the destruction. It's just yeah, reallocating and random and like, uh, yeah. And and with that, if with that sort of money, I could even create an infrastructure of like exchanger. You know, I could make some attempt. I mean, it's all a nightmare and silly and probably not realistic. But, but we're not really talking about realism here. Um, yeah, no, that changes not. it slightly to make it more tempting because now it's not destroyed. It's just well, think about too exists. the the harm. You know, quote unquote harm. Now is not evenly distributed. Like I mean, some. Some poor family that was only going to get, you know, an ugly sweater could instead get... Because <laughs> that's get what the... poor people buy, ugly sweaters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right? Otherwise, well, I guess everyone gets ugly sweaters. but, <laughs> but Or like a pair of socks or a lump of coal, whatever. Like, yeah. um, whatever they get, some small cheap gift could instead be scrambled up and replaced with, you know, the new... Lexus car, whatever that the rich hoity-toity people get for you know each other. That's um, amusing to think about, by the way. Just right, and so like you could, or you know, you could. A, a lot of people would open their presents. I mean, most people would open their presents and get something totally unexpected and be like, "Why did you give me this?" You know, why? What if it was why a personalized you... thing? Yeah, someone made a comic book that of their husband or wife you know yes, like a customized yeah, right. and that, that gets thrown in there just like nonsensical that would. to some it would, stranger it would, yeah. it would be chaotic but some people there would be some people who get the better end of the deal because they get i mean there are good gifts and some people would get those good gifts and there are crappy gifts and some people would get that in place of the the, the good gift so i mean whatever harm there would be from destroying all gifts certainly that would be lessened uh by scrambling them all right yeah, because you get something no matter what, and sometimes it's better. So yeah, it would it would lessen the harm, Le- but so not enough makes it more... for you. Not enough for you to take a million dollars to free the genie, uh, so he can do that though. I mean, a million dollars? No, probably not. I mean, I have to live with the fact that I just impacted the like, big time people, and and a million dollars is life changing, but not. I just don't know. I think I'd walk away from that, and then I think I'd probably do it with the. The billion, you know, the billions yeah. and billions. Okay, all right. So I'm surprising how, myself, though. You, you know, I'm surprising yeah. myself with this answer that I would do it. So, so how about now? If the genie he offers to let you 
swap around all the Christmas presents in the world as you please. He's got all of these special genie tools that will let you look up, you know, recipe presents by recipient or giver or the present themselves. You can you can, and time doesn't pass while you're inside the phonograph, so you can micromanage mm-hmm. all the gifts in whatever way you want. You know, you could search all the car gifts and swap them with all the sweater gifts, you know. However you want to do that, you can make your own gifts really great and people you dislike, you could give them all the bad gifts, whatever. Don't the, the only catch is in this situation the genie says you have to allocate 30% of the gifts in a pile for him to destroy. He'll, he'll let you allocate 70% of them however you want, but 30% of them he wants to destroy. And I get to, I and, get to and, and, and yeah, decide he'll give which you, 30%. Yeah, you get to swap all of that stuff around. Is that good enough to, to, let, him, to let him free to, to do this bargain? Well, let me ask a qualifying question. So I switch them all up, and then he randomly goes in and destroys 30%, or do I get to hand him over the 30% to destroy? Yeah, you get to point which which ones, which 30% of the gifts get destroyed. And and you're considering, so if someone gives someone a pencil and someone gives someone a car, that's those are two gifts. So I could choose yes. the pen. Okay. That's right. Um, um, I think... I don't know if that's better or worse than the other random one. Yeah, because <laughs> you've almost... That's so strange. This is such a strange scenario. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I don't know how to... It's. I like your scenario because, okay, now I have some more say and I can... But, you know, I don't think there's any... Like, in my randomly going... It's not like I'm going to just go, I'm going to help the poor and screw over the rich or something. Just That's a little too simplified. Um, I certainly could go for all the little trinkety items that are I would estimate to be throwaway gifts anyway, and I would just select all of that. And I said su- I suspect that there's a, probably thirty percent of gifts that are just whatever, just filling an obligation. Mm-hmm. So you might let's say that that's an accurate estimation. Thirty percent of gifts are throwaway gifts, like just obligations because of the time of the year. If that's right. accurate, then then those could go away with very little harm done. And then I could absolutely help um, by, I could even say this person gets uh, the Le- Alexis. I could sw- I could swap very similar items. Mm-hmm. Like I could say you, this person was going to get a Lexus. I, 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 this might even be a loophole and probably not what you mean. But if certainly there'd be two people getting a Lexus, same model, you know, and I could try and make that as even as possible. Um you know, but one was blue and one was black or something like, okay, whatever they can deal with that. Um, and so I could do, I could minimize damage there. So I think that is more appealing than the, the random one. I think it is more appealing. So in this situation, you would, you know, in the genie device, you would look up all of the crappy throwaway gifts, um, and you would put those in the genie pile. Here's the ones you get to destroy genie. And then you just, you let all the other seventy percent of gifts go to their original, you know, recipients unaltered. Is that kind of how you're planning to handle this situation? Or trying to minimize the damage done. So they, I mean, they can't go to the original. I think the the, the stipulation is I have to switch it up, right? Well, he just he just lets you handle the presents as you please. He, he oh, oh, well then yes. Sorry, you, you I, can, I thought you I still can, had to switch them up. Yeah. You can switch them up. You could change. No, like, I wouldn't. If, I wouldn't do if, that though. Yeah. Well, no, I, I would, mean, if yes, there I'd was go to the original. So, so you would you would not exercise any of your own will on the situation except for choosing which throwaway gifts get put in the genie destroy pile. That's all. That's yes. all you would do. That's all I would do. And I and for the billions of dollars I get, I would uh, yes, I would you, take that you, one. No, and you, not... you don't. You don't get billions of dollars for this. Oh, what do I get? Nothing. You get to be free. You get to leave the phonograph. Oh, that versus just leaving. <laughs> yeah, you can just oh. walk. You can walk away, or you can take this bargain, free the genie. He'll destroy thirty percent of the gifts, and you can do what you want, swapping around the other gifts. Oh, and why the would genie. I do that? And the genie no longer captures the next person who comes by and offers them, you know, the first oh. w- worst deal. I mean, the, oh. why? Why would you do this? Because you now get to. In exchange for getting rid of thirty percent of gifts that cause very minor harm, you know things that you 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 think are throwaway gifts, you could exchange 
you know, the rich person who's getting four Lexuses, you could exchange one of your crappy gifts for that Lexus. You could get a Lexus and he could get three Lexuses and, <laughs> you know, a teacher Apple or something, right? Like you could, you you know, you could give you, you could make sure the gifts your friends get are good and some other people, you know, that you don't know or don't like get less good gifts. Like you, yeah. you have the power to orchestrate a Christmas in the way that you think is appropriate and, you know, the genie gets his thing, and you're both freed from the phonograph. And I, th- I think the angle is knowing someone else is going to come along might take a worse deal and cause more harm. I get to sort of mitigate the harm. So in some ways, I could argue that I'd still just give each person their gift. I, I don't want a power, nor do I desire a power to say, oh, they have four Lex- two- Lexi. I guess that's plural, <laughs> Lexis. Lexis. Um, they're getting four Lexises. And that's crap. I'm taking one of those. Uh, that doesn't sit right with my moral code whatsoever. I mean, I'm still grossed out by the four Lexuses, but like <laughs> that's I can be grossed out and not like commit a, a an immoral action against them. You know what I mean? I could just roll my eyes and be like, "Man, that's screwed up." Uh, but that doesn't mean I should take from them. I should just, you know, maybe I can have a conversation with them about how they. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but that's a, I just, yeah, there's no moral temptation to say, I'm going to orchestrate a Christmas for myself and my buddies and my friends and screw over some, essentially, so, like the, the rich people here are the ones that are more vulnerable, right? Like, in terms of like, we can, the temptation would be to screw over rich people because, like, they're going to be fine anyway and whatever. But, like, I don't know. That's just, that's immoral to me. So, so, I'm not so let me get this that. straight. You, you're willing to destroy all Christmas, pre- allow the genie to destroy all Christmas presents if you get this gargantuan sum of money in exchange. Uh, but, but... I don't think so, but maybe. <laughs> but... Well, that's what you said. I mean, you said if you got the value of all presents that you were surprised Oh, yeah, yourself, then I'm but- very tempted. I think, I was like, I think yes, but I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking about it. Okay. So, but, but you could do a similar sort, uh, like y- your justification that you're thinking about for for taking that huge sum of money was that you could do more good with that money to offset the harm that people experience by getting their presents destroyed. And in this situation, you you could do a similar sort of reallocation of gifts. Like you could, you could put your morals into practice in a way by giving the people Mm. who you think are, you know, morally valuable, the valuable gifts and the people you think are morally despicable, the poorer gifts. Um, y- you could do that sort of thing here, uh, potentially. Yeah, it's a good point. It's calling out an inconsistency that I'm trying to understand. Uh, but I feel like we're missing one of the scenarios that was more tempting to me that, like, I can... What was it about, like, not destroying all gifts and still getting a large sum of money was that not, was that one that was not that, one that of was okay. that was scrambling scrambling the gifts up just scrambling them random totally randomly. scrambling and still getting uh, and still the getting money. the money yeah yeah that's tempting um <laughs> I, I guess i'm having to, I'm, where i'm struggling or where i'm battling is to ch- still estimate how much harm is being done because if you start to emphasize the fact that you're only harming like l- luxury like, and I mean, any gift is a form of luxury. Like, hey, things are going mm-hmm. all right, and I was willing to invest my money in, in an extra fun thing, not a needs-based thing, but a luxury thing. And and so if I emphasize that, if I'm wanting to justify, then I go, all right, like, the harm is not critical. It certainly is not critical. Um, it is real. It is still harm, but it is not, it's, it's far less significant. I'm not hurting i'm not taking i'm not wounding people uh critically at all i'm just sort mm-hmm. of disappointing people and so how much harm is disappointment uh right. disapp- I, I i suppose there could i'm trying to think of like someone who saved up for a while like a like maybe some mom and dad saved for their to, to get their kid a car or i guess you could even like here's here's your gift uh paying for your first year of college completely and they you know like they really broke the bank to do this if that was if that was going to be their gift i'm imagining that's taken away and that's like that's pretty harm that's harmful to them mm-hmm. um uh, man 
I'll be curious what your thoughts are on this. I just, <laughs> I. All right, let's step forward then. You can continue okay, to yeah. continue to meditate on the situation, and we'll we'll step forward. So, all right, forget the money and forget the gift scrambling. Forget that stuff. The genie, he he now says, okay, fine. You drive a hard bargain. Uh, if you free me, if you free me and let me go destroy all the gifts this year, then I will give you this phonograph. I'll give you this golden phonograph. Taking it, taking it. It's yours. You can use its micro dimension and you can store approximately a one bedroom apartment's worth of space. You can put anything in there you want. Uh, anything you store inside the phonograph, it doesn't spoil. It doesn't age. You can hang out in there. When you're in there, you don't age. And the phonograph can play any music ever composed by mankind, and it sounds amazing. It sounds better than your AirPods. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so, you really sold me with the last detail. <laughs> right. So this amazing golden phonograph can be yours if only you use your wish to free the genie so that he can destroy all the Christmas presents this year. Time doesn't pass. In, not, in the... not, not inside the phonograph. And so I can just, and I can live in there if I want, um, but anytime yep. I want to interact with people, so, and, and I can bring people in too, like it's, it's basically in a bedroom, yeah, sure, like yeah. an apartment and like yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's a one, a one bedroom apartment's worth of space in there. Yeah, you can bring other people in there. And so presumably I could, that's my living quarters, I'm never paying rent and, and I'm also getting like double my life because I just can go in there, maybe more than double. Uh, mm -hmm. Anytime I'm alone or anytime I'm not socializing, I'm just going to be in there. It's just when I want to go to the real world and go. Um, that's all like really fun to think about. Um, right. But but no, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'll be, I'll be like, I mean, the answer is just no. Like causing a lot of harm for a purely selfish gain. Like that you what's I think that's what you're going for is that this is a purely selfish gain like there's a little bit of a loophole if i gain a bunch of money i can then reallocate that money and sort of lessen the damage on the community and you know mm -hmm. implement some of my morals but this is like nope you get this amazing thing but it's just you and well, and maybe you know me and my partner or something but like you know or friends can come in and not age for a little bit or if they need to do some work like that's another thing you can just hang out in the there and like get work done when you want to get work done and yeah, you, know, you can wait. There's till a the last lot of minute, you know. There's a lot of uses for it. I mean, you could so many cool uses. Yeah, I mean, you could extend your life, you know, by double or more, like you say, and you could do so much good with that extra lifetime of yours. Well, you know, does it change if I'm a genius? Truly, like if I were like, oh man, I I can cure cancer. It's just going to take me 50 years, and I don't have 50 years left. But now you've handed me the time to cure cancer. But I'm not. I'm not that guy. So like, <clears throat> yeah, uh, but you could like analyze go, go a lot more guy. poetry you can oh, analyze yeah. so much more poetry for students man you're making my life seem so <laughs> <laughs> like when you put it that way it just sounds like you're you, like, daniel your <laughs> worth is like you yeah you can go analyze some poetry well, all right so the pur the purpose aside from the humor the purpose of this one was to see like okay if you're if you're not tempted by tons and tons of money. By it, are, are you tempted by extending your own lifespan? You know, some people say that time is more valuable than money, and this gives you that option. Yeah, um, I like I like that scenario. But again, the, what's different for me is that with money, I can actually think beyond myself pretty easily and start to justify or legitimately claim I can undo yeah. some damage calls where I just can't with this. Other than like my very close knit like people in my life, and and All that's right. just purely selfish so i'm walking away from that even though i'm gonna think about that one for a long time too because you know i want i, w I would always go man i'm gonna die or er like earlier and stuff now like <laughs> you're your essentially choosing an earlier death and all sorts of stuff so on your deathbed i should have taken the photograph <laughs> if you're on your deathbed and then you take it like do you, you can't just... do that you're you have to wish this and free the genie yeah or, okay. or not, so. um all right so fine all right you're walking away from that one, you moral bastard. <laughs> then um, try this one on for size. The genie, the, so forget the phonograph and forget the money and all that stuff. The genie says, uh, he, he scrawls out in messy handwriting on a scrap of paper, I owe you one wish. And he hands you the piece of paper and he says that you can bequeath this IOU to anyone in your will. And after you die, he will grant that person 
any wish they desire, no strings attached, no Christmas present destroying or anything. So if you if you wish to free the genie, he'll hand you this IOU. He'll go destroy all the Christmas presents this year, and you can give that IOU to your descendant to, to wish for anything they want. Wow, yeah. Um, I like it. Um, man, you know, and they don't have any moral obligation. Like, like, I'm giving them such... Like, it's almost like I wish someone else would do that for me because then I would be free of the moral crap, uh, you know, the violation, but I've just been handed a great wish. So, like... I'm trying to put myself in someone else's shoes. If, like, if I were handed this wish because of this, you know, if I'm the descendant here, um, mm-hmm. I would be thankful. <laughs> I mean, I would because like, I didn't violate any morality, and I would honestly easily forget. I'd be like, yeah, they chose this thing. Is it blood money or is it a blood wish? You know, <laughs> like, is it this like on the backs of other of suffering? I'm receiving this, and would that make me feel guilty? I mean, like, I can't undo it, and here it is, and I didn't cause it, so I don't think I'd feel that guilty. Um, and I don't know if that s- says something about my morality, but like, well, I just wouldn't, I can't feel guilty because, like, I'm, I have this treasure. Like, sure. I can't help as, it. As the descendant, yeah, but, but you're not the descendant. But in I'm this not. Scenario. I was just, I was just trying to think it through, like, okay, mm-hmm. then am I. I could theoretically then say I'm willing to suffer for my own violations in order to bring them such joy. That yes, was like, exactly. I know that's a weird reasoning. That's a weird reasoning, but like, yeah, am I going to suffer? Are, are Are you willing to commit a moral, a, a moral ill in order for your descendant, you know, your son or your daughter to, to, to potentially, potentially undo it, but they, you know, this or will my be done dog, after. you know, I might give it yeah, to my or, dog. You know, or whatever. your dog, or your dog. <laughs> yeah, given the last podcast episode, I should have realized that people will be bequeathing genie wish IOUs to their dogs. Um, I'm I'm walking away from it. Though. You're walking think, away. You don't trust your own offspring. No, I think they do good things. I think they enjoy it. I'm just saying. So imagine this. Um, imagine this scenario. Just imagine you free the genie. He gives you the IOU. He destroys all the Christmas presents. It's terrible. It's on the news. It's chaos. Children yeah. are crying. You feel horrible because of that. Even your presence disintegrated. You were going to get like a new set of AirPods, and they disintegrate oh in your hands. Um, and you, all you have is this stupid piece of paper. Fast forward, you know, however many years, you're on your deathbed. You bequeath it, and you say, "I don't know if this is going to work, but this genie gave me this. That's why the presents were destroyed back in 21." Um, and uh, then your son or whatever could use the IOU, the genie appears, and he says, I wish for world peace and for everyone to get along with each other and no one to be hungry or sad or crying. Or he could wish for literally anything and solve all the world's problems forever. Uh, and and you're going to walk away from this opportunity. Uh, well, you painted it pretty you know, I guess when you start thinking about, yeah, a wish for world peace, I always, like, I don't even fully understand that. I understand the wish, and it's a great, it seems like one of the best wishes you could make, but um, we're solving some serious ill, that, which I guess, yeah, once you get in the supernatural realm, I was actually just thinking sort of narrowly, you know what? Yeah, I'm taking it. <laughs> Convince me to take it. Maybe I'm but, just not on but, my game today. Okay, good. But. I want I want to tempt you, but... But the reason I find this one so interesting is because you you don't there's no guarantee that your son will make the moral choice and yes. and wish for world I could, peace. Or I anything. could say please wish for world peace, right? There's nothing wrong like, like there's nothing like you get to do whatever you want with this, but I'd I'd prefer you to, to cure cancer or whatever, like do 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 the most good, common good or something. Like yeah, I, I you, can I can make my wishes known. Uh, yeah, or my, you can my say, desire for his for how he or she would use the wish yes yes you can do that you can do that but you you're dead you know once you once you bequeath that to to them you know you're gone and they can and I mean, do they what could they want. use it for like a taco bell mexican pizza that no longer exists they could get that's right the perfect they one could, or something they could do that they you know that's a that's a high possibility <laughs> um, so i yeah i still i think that they i'd like to think that I'm getting to choose who to leave it to. So I'm going to leave it to someone I know and care deeply about and my relationship with them. I think the depth of our relationship 
will give me some indication of what whether they listen to me or at least follow their moral compass, which if we're very close, um, our moral compasses are reasonably aligned. Uh, so yeah, I think that they would do some fantastic things that outweigh the harm done. Um, and all the stipulation is still that the genie's going to do this for the next person going along, right? So um, yeah, if you don't if you don't free the genie, then he's gonna you know the ne- he's gonna trap the next passerby or and he's gonna go through this <laughs> list of options and tempt them, and they'll probably take you know they'll probably get all the Christmas presents destroyed in a worse way. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's that's justification but it still is comforting to know it it helps it actually does help to go yeah there someone else would do it and it is landing in my lap and i am going to try to exercise my morality within reason and that's probably higher than just whoever random person it's going to land in i mean everyone feels that way that they're more moral than the average person i'm I'm assuming a lot of people you know more than 50 percent feel that way but um Mm -hmm. I do believe I believe it, <laughs> arrogant <laughs> or not, arrogant or not, I believe it. So, um, yeah, better in my hands than some someone else's. Uh, all right, okay. I mean, I don't. That sounds terrible, but I guess, but I believe it. So we got you. So we we you you took one of them, but let's let's pretend for a moment that you didn't you didn't take that offer. Uh, okay. Uh, so the genie he's amused by your mortal sense of morality, um, and uh, so he says that technically, that so the here's a new it's a new offer now uh, so he says that technically the genie charter only says that he has to grant you a wish but it doesn't actually say when he has to grant the wish so what he's going to do is he's going to keep you captive in the phonograph for the next month and he's going to pelt you with moral questions and quandaries unless you let him go right now unless you use your wish to free him so that he can go destroy all the christmas presents uh and and the, the rules of the phonograph are the same. When you're in there, you don't need food or water or sleep or whatever, and you don't age. And But the outside world does continue to to go on as normal. So so oh, okay. here, just, just to make it clear, the situation is you're imprisoned in the phonograph for one month. Uh, if you wish to free yourself, he's just going to keep you there for one month and annoy you while you're there. Uh, but then after one month, you'll go free and, you know, and he doesn't get to destroy all the Christmas presents. Or you can wish to free him right now. He'll destroy the Christmas presents, and you get to go free right now as well with nothing. So would I take a month worth of annoyance to avoid all presents being destroyed? Basically, yes. Yeah, yeah. I would take a month worth of annoyance to save all the presents in the world. That's... Uh, and uh, and all me, you know, easy. you're you're gonna be absent from the world for an entire month, and no one will know where you are, and you know all your uh, responsibilities will, will be interrupted and upset and everything. So just consider that as well. Like you you are gone without a trace for a month. Yeah, so I am taking a big hit there, and I'm worried, worrying a lot of people, and my job is in jeopardy. Um, assuming I get to explain myself yep. just yeah when, when you come out, back like when you else. come back yeah. you get to say listen there was a golden phonograph i rubbed it genie I saved all the presents yeah but but of course uh, you know it's february right now so the presents you know they by taking this offer the presents won't be destroyed and there will be basically no proof of your situation um i, th- I i'm taking it though i mean you know I, I, <laughs> i'm taking I, I, yeah it's just a month of harm to me and worrying my i actually hate the thought of worrying my loved ones you know a whole lot uh i Uh hate that that's that's worse than like my job would probably fire me and then i like to think take me back after they understand what i what sacrifices i made well Um, do you think but all right so i just want to hammer this point like you're going to come back after a month without a trace and you have no evidence to support that you got captured by a genie in his phonograph. Oh, and we're talking about a re- so it's like the kind of a real world here where I'm going to say that and sound really crazy to people. Yeah, if you want, I mean, you're yes, like you you're going to be gone without a trace for a month, and you have to explain yourself. And what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to explain that? You're going to say a genie captured you? They're not going to believe that. I guess. I was foolishly thinking in this world when I explain the genie thing that they are going to understand. 
like I was thinking in the world where this is, can happen, then there's a world where they, they, they believe, you know, people would just go, oh, no, I hate when, <laughs> but no, it's just like everything else is the same. This is a reality world. So I'm just sitting there like a madman saying I was captured by a genie. Yes. And they're going to want to put me in a psychiatric like ward. Um, I mean, probably not. I mean, you're going to be explaining this to your boss at the school and they're going to be shaking their head and whatever. Like, honestly, what I imagine the more realistic situation is, is you're going to come up with some other more believable I know, excuse. I, I think I would just almost say I I don't know what happened and I'm worried. Like, I, I blanked out for a month. Uh, can you help me? And like, and they put me in a little you know, recovery and they give me some psychiatric trials and they see that I'm fine and they go, well, this is super mysterious. And then I can say, you want to really know what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then they keep you for a long time. Yeah, I know. All right. the, I really might have to just say, I don't know what happened, which is immoral in itself, right? To just not tell the truth. And then I'd be really worried. I, God, I'd ha- I do hate the idea of telling someone like, so there was this phonograph <laughs> and, you, and you tell the story and like, because I mean, I'm going to distance myself from someone telling that story as truth, you know, uh, but you're still, like ultimately idea. you're still going to take, you're going to take gonna the do month. It. Yeah. All right. So what if it's I think, one I think year I, after oh, a whole year? Yeah. A year, not just a month. Um, man, the pain I'm called, I, I really am thinking like if it were just this sort of isolated me being in for a year, I, I can do that and I would, but the reason I want to draw the line is the like devastation for my, for, for people that love me. And I'm, I'm, I know it sounds cheesy but, and I'm not trying to like, <laughs> I'm not trying to t- toot my own horn and say, I'm just so, you know, but, but it would just really hurt people so deeply. And that pain is substantive and real i guess it would be undone after a year to some degree but i think it would psychologically screw with them in ways that is not just a year's worth of damage i think it would do something Mm -hmm. um and then the explanation is just as difficult you know i hung out with a genie for a year it's just not an (laughs) acceptable answer um so i might have to let the like that damage is so intimate and severe and yes, acute in the sense that it's like pointed and narrow and just me and like t- 10 people in my life are going to be reeling from it. But that that damage might outweigh the damage of just, you know, some luxury items. Seven dissipating. billion people's gifts disintegrating in front of them on Christmas yeah. morning. I mean, uh, if that's that that's the struggle of this whole thing is like, yes, that, that number is just so overwhelming, but... Also, it's all luxury uh, item. It's all disappointment. Uh, there's some that will be. I guess I'm trying to conjure up ideas, like I said, of the of the parents gifting an education that they saved up for for years, or mm-hmm. like right. the more legitimate losses, not the ah oh, man, I looked forever for that sweater and you're gonna love it. And I'm so ticked that it's gone. Like yes. that that doesn't carry as much weight. Uh, but I'm I'm guessing there are some. Ooh, I found I I found. Your, your mom's wedding ring that you've been looking for and like I packaged it nicely and was going to give it to you, you know, like you're, you're mm-hmm. just some sort of like ultimately sentimental gift or yep. value, truly valuable gift. Uh, yeah. So uh, that pa- there, there's got to be dozens, if not hundreds of those instances of like real loss. Right. Um, but even that might not weigh to the, like to me, yeah, take that like sentimental. Like I found your this piece that you thought was gone, and the joy was going to be so great. And so they even get to see it. I'm assuming they open it, see it, and then it dissipates or dissolves or whatever. So it's like, oh my gosh, um, that pain's real. But that's still different than the sort of pain from like a loved one dis- like believing them to be dead, and like that. Oh God, like it's a morbid thought. And After- yeah. After one, one year, year you return. do you think there would be every people would start? I mean, they would wonder if you're dead. Yeah, but there's going to be. I mean, I mean you're I not going to know. It's just going to be gone without a trace. I think within a week, like they're they're fearing the worst, um, and then within a month, they're like, it's it would just be so uncharacteristic. Like no one's going to think I just up and left. Like that just isn't a factor. So I something bad has happened, and after a week or so, yeah, they're fearing the worst. A month, they're trying to accept my death, but not really. They're going to keep looking just out of 
and so yeah like I, I god i so that that is a long time so yeah then i come back and say hello have i have i got a story for you <laughs> um and like but i think dam- real damage is done though because I, I just don't believe in the return is the end of the damage in that case i think like i put them through something mm-hmm. um unbelievable and so so you're gonna let the genie destroy the present i might but like not in a i want to be clear this is really not about me hanging out for a year with them like i don't give i could i can deal with that yeah obviously that's not that's you know that's obviously not the worst part of this yeah situation so i okay all right yeah i think so 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 what what if instead like what if instead of one year it's 100 years I might as well be dead for real. I mean, I get to live, but my family experiences my death. And, and so the the only I wouldn't at, since you didn't take it for one year, I wouldn't even ask you this. The only distinction between one year and a hundred years is now you don't age or anything, and you basically get to time travel into the future a hundred years, which is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm obviously gonna. Like, if I was torn, I was a little torn on the last one. I think I let the gifts be destroyed. With this one, I the hundred years, it's just like a no-brainer. I definitely destroy, have the gifts destroyed. Um, that one I feel pretty, I think, resolute about. Like, I don't feel like I'm waffling much. Like, that's right. just... Like, I figured I figured that would be the case. Whereas, yeah, because that, that damage or cost or whatever is just significant. The one year is a, probably the best question for me yet like i'm struggling to (laughs) to answer that honestly and i'm actually impressed with this mind your morals in the terms of like i I feel like i'm learning a little something about myself that whether i like it or not or like i'm i realized my answers weren't in all consistent and that's annoying to say out loud Uh, you know (laughs) what i mean you can you can meditate on it after and think about the genie and then if you ever come across it you'll be prepared i suspect then usually you you tell me that you agree with my decision making and even have a similar process and add a few tidbits that I didn't consider but but uh, like we I mean, might be I pretty can, different here or I'm not sure I'd be curious maybe, I don't know I I can I can walk back through it and try to think of think about it for myself uh, okay so forget about the forget about the previous ones uh no more Mr. Nice Genie I guess the <laughs> the, the last one wasn't that nice but again all right so a new situation then now the genie takes your legs your legs are gone he will return them to you if you free him. Otherwise, he'll grant if you wish to be freed, he'll grant you your wish. But this is a real jerk of a genie, and he says that uh, technically you are still you without your legs. So he isn't breaking the genie charter by keeping your legs. So now your choices are wish to free yourself legless or wish to free the genie, and you get to leave you know like like you normally are. But he destroys Man. the presence. Man, this scenario. I, maybe I'm going to sound too noble here, but I think I leave leg, legless. I think my personal, my acute personal pain here or damage to me is, is, is significant. It's life altering. It's like I, I. That's okay. So that's the curiosity. This is a life altering and upsetting and transformative in a mostly negative, almost all negative way. Uh, And the other thing is, you know, 7 billion people are disappointed with hundreds, if not thousands of things that go into real damage, not just luxury damage. (laughs) Funny phrase. (laughs) Um, But I but if I can start to think, I have time to think about this in the genie land, and if I th- if I like if I spend a day or two considering the real damage is done, because that's what I'd have to sit down and truly calculate in a way that wouldn't be good for a podcast, right? But I would just think for days about what what scenarios are likely to pop up with the damage, and I would have a I would try to approximate like damage. I try to quantify it as accurately as possible, and I think. Like there are so many scenarios of real loss in the gifts dissipating that I can kind of carry that on my shoulders <laughs> or, you know. You probably still it, could even without legs. <laughs> yeah. And so. He's taking I, your legs, not your shoulders. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would. I think I would take the loss of legs. I do. Would you, uh, uh would you. 
would you hate phonographs from then on? Oh yeah. I would <laughs> I would I I might become a bitter person and like hate gift giving and screw all of this and all that. like I might. There's a real chance of that. I mean, I all of a sudden have to rethink my existence, my daily operations, my everything, man. Ugh. Um but there's been some breakthroughs with, you know, prosthetics and stuff. So who knows? Maybe like maybe that's possible. But anyway, yeah, I mean, you would still continue to, you know, have your life and your your I mean, obviously it would affect your you would have to learn to live like that, but you know, your career, well, your career's time limited anyway cuz the robots will take it, but <laughs> for a little while anyway, you would still be able to teach even even without legs. So. I think so. I think yeah. Okay. How noble, how noble of you. (laughs) All right, forget that one. So the genie, he's really pissed that you're not taking any of his offers. So he says, fine, fine, free yourself, wish to free yourself. But because you're doing this, the next person who I trap in this phonograph, I'm just going to kill them. They're dead. I'm killing them. If you free me, though, I won't have to do that. I'll just destroy the presents and you can go free. I won't kill anyone. And it's just the presents that are destroyed. Yeah, so one death or all the... One death of a stranger, presumably, or all the presents. Yes. Um. I mean, I think all the presents got to go at that point. Um. Like, because then I feel pretty responsible. Obviously, I'm not the one doing the killing, but like I have uh, allowed for a scenario in which death will occur. And my name is so, or my, I'm linked to that. I caused that in some way. Uh. I mean, I can't say I caused it because the genie did it, but like, yes, I set the wheels in motion, unfortunately. I mean, it's a, and death is so irrevocable and like death is just, I mean, you can try to downplay it, go just one individual, some stranger that you'll never meet again. You could try and throw all that at me, but I mean, this is a human being versus a bunch of items. And so I, I, I guess this is where I feel uncomfortable though. You you talk about whether it's pandemic or the driving or like, like deaths happen all the time. Like, and weirdly, if they change a four way stop sign to a, a, you know, two way stop sign, like that causes deaths in the immediate, but might save lives in the future. Right. All these dry, they statistically, they know this might be a few more wrecks and statistically might cause these deaths. So, but, but they're lessening deaths in the long term. So there's like a, societal justification and i also think we can't you know ruin a society to save you know, that sort of mockery of like oh if, if there's one death that's too yeah, many right. like I, we can't but that's different than this the reason it's different to me um is is like luxury item disappointment and some real harm like i said the hundreds of the thousands well, let, me, let me ask this so do you think do you think it's conceivable that of all the billions of people that receive presents at Christmas time, that the traumatic destruction of those presents uh, might cause one person out of all of those to commit suicide. Yes, probably. I mean, that sounds wild, but like, yeah, that's certainly conceivable. Yeah, I mean, like the college tuition thing that you presented, you could ima- you could imagine someone saving up and buying a really big gift to give you know their kid the chance at the life they never but, had whatever whatever and once that's taken away you know they're in they despair and they kill themselves yes but uh, the difference is they kill themselves and, and also there had to be some fragility already baked into the situation like they weren't like true bopping along perfectly fine and so like their decision and i know like perhaps that's something you could debate is how much is it a decision but i think at the end of the day there is some autonomy if you kill yourself if you end your life like like you you do it and so that's a choice that's being made because fueled by bad decisions yeah it's a choice that wouldn't have happened but for the genie destroying the presence though right and so right and also the killing if him just killing the next person who he captures that's a choice you know that wouldn't happen but for the genie um and like you could also try to make the same argument you just made and say the person who picks up and rubs the phonograph, you know, they do that by their own action. Yeah. And so, in a way, they're dooming themselves. Right, well, let the... me think about... Okay, let me reason through that then really quickly. So, one is like... 
I'm making a choice that condemns someone to death immediately. Like, it, like they will be the next person will die. Um, and then the other one is I'm making a choice that leads to a situation that then leads to a decision. Like, like it's so you are but right. There's potentially, a it, all right, so potentially it could be a hundred people who commit suicide because of this. Out of could all the be, people yeah. in the world, like you, it, the 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 number of people is very hard to let's wrap say, your head around. It's hard to calculate. Let's say it's around five. Like maybe 500 that's a realistic people? number. No, f- five people commit suicide because oh, like the people? gift gets destroyed. Well, I just don't think it's going to be a lot, but I certainly think if well, every Well, I mean, think, gift- put it, look at it this way. I mean, suicide is pretty common. You know, thousands of people commit suicide every year just in the United States. I mean, after the recent uh, Capitol riot, whatever, whatever, like three or four people committed suicide after that. Like just after that one singular event. Do you think that a global supernatural thing, like all the president presents being destroyed, like, and all of the harm that comes along with that potential harm, like you think that would be limited to just five people? I mean, you said how many committed this suicide after the three or four? Three I or forget. Four. The and that was like, number, yes, there was national, Board, like you know, also global attention, but so I'm assuming they were Americans. Um, yeah, there were people involved. So uh, let's call it like 10, 10 people. Then I really think it's probably <laughs> ten to ten to. 15. And this is dumb to sort of quantify how many in this event. But yeah, now yeah, we're talking. About is one, it relevant? Does it matter person. to you, or do you, or does it change your answer at all? It it is. It would be. It, I would have to deeply consider that, and I, I just don't think so. I still think that the, their their decision and their fragility already, because those five, four, three, whatever you said of Americans that ended their life because of this is like, like yes, it was because of this, but it wasn't just because of this. Like, let's be honest. It's not like they they were having this fantastic life. They they turned on the news, saw some bad stuff, and said, "I'm ending it." Like, like there are people who are fragile and i mean i don't i'm not trying to be i mean that's just the reality so fragile people are, are affected disproportionately by uh, uh, is there any other is there any other conceivable gift situation where you know someone's death could result in them not getting a gift like i mean that's that's part of the in, the interesting thing in this gamble is that the Christmas gifts that everyone receives are like you have no idea what people are getting and yeah, giving. Yeah, okay. So, so sometimes the gift might actually be like, like I don't a med- I, medication it, or something. Like maybe I don't know. I'm just saying that there are unknown possibilities, and the harm that you're causing by letting the Christmas presents be destroyed, it's very hard to grapple with. It's very intangible. It, it could well, be significant harm, unknown so, harm, or what? Like. I'm just trying to get you to consider that. Uh, although, let me ask you a quick scenario. This might be silly, but like, okay, so let's say they had had a trouble getting these meds, and they finally did, and it happened to be around Christmas time. So yeah, it's not one of their real gifts because they were gonna try. They've been trying to get the meds for months. This is a life saving med, so they got it. They're super excited. They're going to give it to their grandpa or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it finally came through, and. Yeah, they've already got Grandpa all his gifts and stuff, but they decided to put a bow on it on on the oh, bottle. It's because... destroyed. It gets destroyed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you if they say Merry Christmas right, and right, hand right. you the thing, it gets destroyed. If they put a bow on it, destroyed. If it's under the tree, destroyed. Because I can see those like people. You know, they last minute. They're not last minute, but they just go might as well present it as a gift since the timing of it's so nice. Like let's just right, call right. it a gift, uh, even though it doesn't. You know, doesn't um, matter. This genie, he is really peeved <laughs> about getting trapped in this phonograph back when he was <laughs> when it was given to him, and so he is just he he is painting with a broad brush and well, destroying think, medi- medications, college tuitions, sweaters, everything. I think our conversation is like the reason it's gotten so specific is because measuring the damage is everything. Yes. So I can I can at least say this that the. In a, in a sort of uh, lower res statement, lower resolution statement, I would say that, yeah, it, a death is not worth billions of disappointments. I'd, or I'd rather billions of people be disappointed than someone die. However, if we start to really unpack and can reasonably assume that, that you know, 35, 100 people are going to die because of this decision I'm making, all of a sudden the single death 
like waiting that changes but mm-hmm. again then even like okay 35 people die that were ultra 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 fragile on their deathbed and or so mentally fragile that you know they might but again they, like i feel like we may be limited in our imagination here like yeah, you're right um, like there, there might be there might i i, I can i can't right now conjure up a scenario but it seems that after th- if i gave it days of thought that like oh actually yeah this would cause death statistically that's not about people who are already fragile right whether it's health or mental health or physical health like that there's probably a scenario that i don't can't think of right now that yeah it would take a stable person mental and physical and still up in their lives uh to the point of death like and if that's the case then, then yeah, I guess I gotta have the next person die. Which, ugh, I, I <laughs> you know, that's just such a terrible situation. So did I do it? So did I get you? It's to all kill about him? it's all about the math. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I can't answer that, and I'm not trying to do a cop out. I'm just saying I've t- I've I've expressed to you like well, here's my algorithm, and yeah. I and I that's how I'm gonna apply it best the best I can. And so right. yeah, if if I'm convinced after days of thought that that more people will die because of this, then yeah, I'm going to kill the you know, with just a lesser of two evils kind of moment. I, I, mm. That's, but if I'm, if it's only, if, if I sit there and cannot think of a scenario in which the stable person dies, I'm, I'm, you'll, you'll, I, you'll I risk I, the unknown. You'll risk the unknown rather than perpet- perpetuate the known evil. Maybe because yes, that's a good way to put it. But I, I mean, and and the value judgment here is that the person um, ending their own life, like I am, I am weighting that differently than the person who is not ending their own life. Their life is being ended by sure, an external right. force. I'm weighting that differently. So, um, yeah. Mm. All right, last one, final final one that I thought of. So it, it's not as dark, but the genie uh, begrudgingly he he admits you drive a hard bargain. Uh, so very well. Rather than destroy all Christmas presents, instead he will ruin Christmas by sending a dream to all the children in the world, explaining to them that Santa Claus is not real. <laughs> spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Um, spoiler alert! Jeez. So uh, how does this how does this affect the previous offers? So now now the the harm being done is not destruction of Christmas presents, but destruction of you know the santa claus i'm gonna be honest i wasn't listening my my mind was just stuck on that phrase spoiler alert and how weirdly used that that was (laughs) you offered a truth and you said spoiler alert and then i was like that's actually and this is where my mind as you continue talking i was like literal kind of a cool spot like podcast net title like if you were called spoiler alert and you were like it's not on like giving spoilers to movies oh, yeah. and stuff. It's like here's tru- here truth. Here are truths, yeah, like that are uncomfortable to wrestle with. I like that. Um, and they, let's change they, our that podcast. Could be a, maybe a segment we have called Spoiler Alert, and it's Ugh, like, that's too controversial. That's too controversial for me. I would love it. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I would love to state controversial truths, but that's 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 a we'll, little. We'll risky. consider controversial truths and call it Spoiler Alert. Um, we'll think about it. Anyway, uh, so wait. <laughs> all right, all right sorry, so sidetracked us. Go back to, to so so instead of destroying all the presents, he's going to send a dream to all children in the world and explain to them that Santa Claus isn't real. So that's the bad. That's the bad thing. If you wish to free, um, if you wish to free the genie, then that's what he's going to do. Um, and mm-hmm. and he'll and he'll also give you, you know, examine the previous boons through that lens instead. Does it change any of your answers if that's what he does instead of um, destroy the presence? Absolutely. It changes a lot of my answers. Uh, <laughs> so would you, take, can... would you take the $10,000 for this bargain? I'm, I'm not sure, but once you get to a million, I think the answer is yes. Uh, 10000 <laughs> 10000 I I might walk away from because, like, that's... Yes, that's great for me, but like I could probably do the calculation of like, yeah, I mean, I've just made a decision for a lot of people uh, that wasn't, that's not really fair. Um, a lot of people are going to be like, who's Santa Claus anyway, right? Like, I mean, I'm, you know. Yeah, um, that's true. Or, or whatever cultural, how about whatever cultural uh, fictional character, or, well, I don't want to change it. If it's just Santa Claus, whatever, why am I changing it? Yeah. Um, so, uh, 
uh, 10,000, I think I walk away from a million bucks. Like, sorry, yeah. kids. <laughs> sorry, kids. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like your mild disappointment, you're like 10 minutes of crying is worth it. <laughs> I mean, think about it this way. It's, it's a truth. It's a spoiler that everyone eventually is alerted to, right? Yes, so. exa- that's exactly right. You're going to find out soon enough. And I'm getting, and then the harm caused is like, you know, really even calling it harm, it's disappointment, but it might I, be I like mean, healthy disappointment like, in some ways. From yeah. a certain point of view, it's not even harm. It's good, good right? Yes, like you're, you can make a case you're removing this lot, the Santa Claus lie. <laughs> and this, this yeah. goes back to, you know, a debate we've had in the past about Santa Claus telling kids about yeah. Santa Claus that we don't have to get into. But from a certain perspective, doing this is a moral good. And so you get 10000 bucks, and you get to, to, do, a moral to do some good. good. Well, the reason I'm just hesitant is 10000 is like truly like, yeah, that, that probably shapes my year differently. I might take a vacation that I wouldn't have or invest in a thing that I wouldn't have. But like there's just some weight to I've just affected all kids and – so I'd have to think about that one long and hard. So, but I'd probably say no is my gut. But but I might say yes at ten thousand. Once you get to a million, I think we're into like yeah, I'll take that. So <laughs> right, um, and yeah, then okay. you know, fair enough. So for all the other ones, more valuable than that, you would you would take it. Absolutely, I th- yes. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I I want to give that a little more thought, but I'm just telling you, like, yeah, considering how little damage, if not good, like I can really lean into the telling kids the truth about Santa Claus is good and I can feel comfortable with that morally. Like, yeah, there's some gray area about, you know, making a choice for their parents. Um, that's probably, that's wrong. That's not my place and all of that, but like, whatever. It'll be fine. Well, think about it. Bucks. Think about it this way. The government makes choices for parents all the time. Literally all the time. They tell parents what they have to do with their kids. Uh, like and, sending them to school kind of thing? Yeah, or sure. You yeah, mean? you have to. Yeah, you have to go to school. That's a decision made for parents. Uh, and some politician, some government official made that decision. And, you know, and so for you to feel really bad about making this decision for parents when similar or far more consequential decisions are made all the time, I don't know. Like, it just, yeah, I'm just trying to think of the most harmful thing. And that might be yeah, like sure, sure. a few yeah, right. days of the mopey kid, a few days. I mean, I, I don't think it'd go into months. Um, and I certainly just, for most kids, it'd be upsetting for a, a brief amount of time, very brief. And then for the extreme well, ones, days. Uh, and also maybe. consider, too, that since this is a simultaneous thing happening to all kids at the same time, like now they get a kind of a group bonding sort of, they get to endure the trauma all together and yes. Yeah you know potentially less traumatic because they all get to That's realize santa's fake at the same time <laughs> yeah no so maybe i'd take the ten thousand. no i really don't know i might take the ten thousand, but i think i'd walk <laughs> away just because of un- there is a degree of unknown and i only have the capacity to imagine how much damage and i i'm just not mm-hmm. ten thousand dollars certain at a million dollars, I'm like willing to take a risk a little bit of like, oh, I didn't consider that, but oh well, it's fine. Like I have a million dollars, whereas if I call some harm I didn't consider with ten thousand, I'd be ah, if I consider that, I might have. So it's basically wedging the unknown, and ten thousand isn't enough with considering I'm limited and don't can't consider every scenario. But a million, mm-hmm. it's like I'm willing to take that risk. Okay, fair enough. So I can't. I guess there's too many scenarios to ask you to sort of reiterate all yours. But where do you agree and disagree with me, generally? Um, Would hmm. you take the ten thousand dollars for the for the the Santa Claus scenario? Um, probably, yeah. You well, might take I don't it for know. So the, you might pay a thousand dollars to do it. <laughs> no, I would. I wouldn't do that. So my, you know, I have to when when we talk about you know how much money would you take for X, um. Like, I have to consider the value of money to me um, because, like, m- my lifestyle is com- – I'm comfortable with my lifestyle. That's not to say that I don't want more money or wouldn't take more money. But I, I – my quality of life is fine. I'm a frugal person. Like, I don't spend all the money that I make anyway. And if I got a large sum of money, I probably wouldn't spend any of it, you know? It would just go in some account somewhere. And, yeah. you know, I, I might spend it in my retirement or, you know, my kids would get more money eventually or something like that. But, like, 
the value when you try to entice me with some large sum of money that i don't know it doesn't have the weight that i think it does for a lot of people so which you know which i guess i'm, I'm grateful for that situation but uh you know when it comes to do i compromise my morals or do i take some lump sum of money like it's a little bit easier for me to say nah i'm good i'm okay the way i am i don't need your money so uh, so so certainly That's a when good qualifying statement to make yeah so certainly when the the stakes are destroy all the presents like when i was writing this i didn't i didn't actually think quite as hard about it as we did here and i didn't consider you know really like life altering gifts like there 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 is the possibility that absent a christmas gift someone could be seriously harmed uh, it's hard for me to really think of good situations where that would happen but it's possible and that possibility makes me really leery of taking the bargain, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. So so for the monetary, for the money, I probably would not take it for 10000 or a million. The total value of all destroyed presents, like now we're getting into situations where, you know, I could take the money and then, you know, this all the presents being destroyed is going to be... This is going to be a global phenomenon. Like this is going to be the, on the news. It's going to be the talk of years. Society is going to be touched by this supernatural event. It's going to be everywhere. It, like COVID. Like, look at how much we've overreacted to COVID. The reaction to presence being destroyed is going to be like nothing you've ever seen before. Yeah. So 100%. there's going to be opportunity for me now, the richest person in the world, to say, "Okay, listen up, if." your tuition got destroyed or you know if your meds got destroyed or whatever life-altering thing happened you get in touch with me and you know i'll fix it up for you like there's the potential for me to to do that all you ipads and airpods people you just lost a gift sorry um but you know life-altering people maybe i can help you out and mitigate some of that harm meanwhile i am now like extraordinarily rich and can you know I can push other good out into the world for all the reasons that you outlined that you might take that bargain. Yeah. Um, no, that's good reasoning. So I, that's, that's at least, that's kind of what I'm thinking there. Like, I feel like I could perhaps mitigate the most extreme of the situations. Maybe. Although if I'm being truly thorough, then, you know, maybe there are time sensitive things or, or maybe the scale of harm is, is greater than I than I think. And, you know, when I do that, there's also going to be fraudulent cases when I say, hey, you know, people reach out to me, they're going to be, I'm going to get swamped with requests for money. Um, and I may not be able to, to whittle out the, the true ones in there quick enough. So still a lot of harm, but for the sake of mind your morals and this segment, I'm going to, I'm going to go out there and say, I'll take, I'll take the bargain in that situation. For all the gifts, the price of all for, the gifts. For the yeah. price of all the gifts. I'll, I would also take the bargain if the genie let me swap around the Christmas presents. I would take I would take that bargain because I then I could ensure that the people who you know had really important gifts got to keep those gifts, and the people who had throwaway gifts, I could let those be destroyed in the thirty percent that the you know that the genie gets to destroy, and then. Like, I don't have the same moral qualms as you do with swapping around people who I think are bad people, swapping their gifts for my gifts or anything. Like, I could get a lot of really good gifts because, like you say, now these are luxury items. I know what they are. I know who's giving them, and I know who's receiving them. I can assess the moral value of this situation, and, and like, I don't feel as bad saying, oh, you're a terrible person that I know has done terrible things, and you're getting a Lexus? <laughs> nope. I'm swapping that for my, you know, my cookery pan. Like that surprises me a bit, though. Like, you're, I mean, depress you on that. Like, what? Like, why? Why does that? Why are you okay with that? Even if they're a jerk, or even if they've, uh, maybe they are have done some white collar crime, right? And so they're millionaires, and they're getting something like, they're getting some million dollar, you know, nice, nice, expensive gift. Like, you're just, you're willing to take that because. Like you're doling out justice, I guess, in that way or something. Like, yeah, 
I, right. Yeah. I mean, because because I've I've been given given a supernatural opportunity to like now I have the knowledge of what's going on. It's not just that I'm taking a gamble and assuming that this bad person, you know, is getting an unjustified gift. Like, you know, now now I have that knowledge, and so I can, you know, I can make a swap. Uh huh. And like again, like if I'm determining harm, the harm caused, then like. I can determine whether their disappointment will be minor or or not minor. I, I can at least make an estimation for it. Uh, well, you're also having to and, guess. Like, do you know of a lot? Like, of a lot. No, of I don't actually. Are just so definitely doing bad. Yeah. No, I don't. So it would actually be. It would. I probably wouldn't end up doing very much. Does this and besides, room like have a internet? Can you? So you find some rich person <laughs> who's getting a big gift, and then you do some de- try and do some deep dive to find out <laughs> if they have done illegal things and just gotten away with it, right? And then if you find that they have, then you feel justified well, like, listen, in sort of well, taking the gift. <laughs> th- th- think about it this way: the the guy who hit and run your car way back, like you could look and see what he's yeah. getting for Christmas, or the my former <laughs> boss who who I despise with every fiber of my being and who you know deserves terrible things to happen to them, like. <laughs> I would be swapping her gifts around. I would be swapping her gifts for really horrible things. Like, really and it would be things, hilarious. Yeah. Really yeah, funny yeah, things. Yeah. It would be hilarious. And I would be getting the good things that she would have gotten. And it would be so funny. Like, that, even if that's what I limit myself to, then that makes this bargain worth it. Um, <laughs> I, it just, it seems like, I, I mean, I guess in, it's internally consistent in terms of like, it's not unjust because what you're doing is just because you know the real harm that has been caused and you're confident. Well, so but like, like if I'm, I'm if I'm being a... critical, yeah, if I'm being critical of my own my own bold uh, determination here, then yeah, it's not it's not technically right for me to enforce my own I you know mode of justice on all the people blah 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 blah. But like again, I. The stakes are low now, right? Like we've eliminated the high yeah. stakes tuitions and meds and stuff. The stakes are now low, and it, in a way, in a way, like when you can, when you know you can eliminate the greatest harm, then I'm not so sure that press your morals is the worst way to live. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, that's an interesting way to think about it. So I mean, I'll, I'm not gonna. I'll be thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna. I mean, again, we're in hypothetical land. Mind your morals. So it's not like I have I just, to live live by this decision necessarily. I really, but. I typically uh, operate under this sort of like avoid playing God in any no, way. No, absolutely, like, so, definitely. Yeah, and so that there, there's that element of playing God in that situation that I don't like. But but if it's there certainly is. low stakes and you can really really benefit, like hmm, you know, maybe. Well, think think about it this way. So what if you know. A totally different situation you were elected to some position of authority or power maybe you're the principal of your school or the president of the united states or whatever like you're going to be playing god in a sense like you're going to be making decisions that affect many people's lives and is that okay is that morally justifiable like in a way having this opportunity and having the genie provide me with this Obviously, I wasn't elected or anything like that, so there are moral differences. But, like, in the same way, I'm making a decision, and like, is my decision to swap some gifts around any more or less moral than a president or a principal's decision to alter policy in some way? Just a question. I mean, it's a good... You're right. There's a little bit... But they earned that position, I guess. Uh, but you're right. I, uh, I found the phonograph, Finders Keepers. <laughs> Yeah, and also to say that they earned it completely is a joke too. Like, right? You, you, the circumstances you had to be born into, and the interest your parent, like all the randomness that involved them getting into those positions. You know, there's a lot at play there. Yeah, yeah. The the IOU, I would take that deal like you did eventually after convincing. Um, for the being trapped a long time, that one's hard. I'd be curious about uh, that. That was probably the one I struggle with the most. I think for a month I would take it. I think my family would survive a month without me. It would be it would be stressful, but they would be fine. A year would be hard, but I don't know. I, I tend to think that 
the psychological damage, it wouldn't be quite as bad um, or as irreparable, irreparable um, as as you think. Uh, but but weighing that against the destruction from the gifts, it's tricky. I think I probably I think I probably am on board with your decision and let the gifts be destroyed rather than be trapped a year. Plus the genie's gonna be so annoying. <laughs> what about the legs? Would you lose your legs? No. Nah, no. Nah. Wouldn't do that. <laughs> just let the presence be destroyed. And just I'd blame it on the genie. I'd be like, so genie did this, not me. <laughs> um so that's pretty much our big difference, and then maybe the legs. And like honestly, yeah, I, I'd have to think about it longer too, for sure. But I think yeah, I, I, I'm fond of my legs. Um, well, I am too, and I love walking. Actually, like I love walking more than the average person for sure. So yeah, I'm a fan. But you know, also, so in the same way that you said that, you know, you just have a general guideline not to not to play God, which I I agree with. Um, I, I have the same standard. I also have a guideline that. You know, I basically I won't negotiate with terrorists. Like I won't be bullied into, uh, you know, into some moral. I, you know, if you tell me pull the lever on the trolley problem or whatever, I'm just gonna instead shoot you a bird and walk away and say you're the one putting me in this situation. You're you're the one responsible for this harm, not me. And in yes. this situation, I might say, okay, genie, you're the jerk here, not me. Like I'm not gonna leave the phonograph feeling guilty at the person's tuition who got destroyed by the genie like i'm not gonna say that's me i did that to them i'm gonna say the genie did that to them Um, yeah i mean that's a good that's actually something i should probably embrace more like there was a moment leaving Publix the other day and someone wanted money uh for like to help the kids whatever generic thing donation thing right and uh and i didn't do it and god you're a monster (laughs) well what i mean and that that is my philosophy is like well uh if you start to feel those pangs of guilt it's like they created the scenario of tension or you know like they're asking and if you're seriously guilty then why are you not going out and donating to every right exactly. why aren't you actively finding it so if they if if they can present a scenario like you can just reject like no i i don't i don't have to participate in this like no yes. And so that's, that's my, what that's, that's your same philosophy. philosophy being applied with the legs scenario. They're yeah, saying they're going to destroy stuff. It's like, wait a second, like you're, yeah, you're playing terrorist right here. I just don't right. negotiate. Like, nope, that, that's that's my philosophy as well with with donations and stuff. I just say I have a rule that I just say nope unless um you know unless I'm seeking out that situation. If it's foisted upon me, I basically just say nope. Um, yeah. And so viewed under that light, you know, like. I guess that's kind of the interesting balance of this um, this situation is trying to determine whether that philosophy is worth sticking to, even you know even when major things are going to happen. Like yeah, the death of a person, the next person. I could I could apply with I could still apply that philosophy, but like yeah, I probably would apply that philosophy um, and just say like you're not blackmailing me, genie. You do what you got to do. But in or, some ways, that's a cop-out of this it, scenario, isn't it? It is. A little bit. I mean, it's kind of a cop-out. It is a moral position that you're staking out. If I really wanted to cop-out, I would say, I wish to be freed. And then as soon as I'm freed, I grab the phonograph, take it on a boat to the middle of the ocean and throw it in. <laughs> yeah. And then then I prevent the next person from dying and the genie's trapped forever. So that's the real cop-out. I'm glad you weren't creative enough to think of it. I'm just glad that it was a phonograph and, and not a, you know, a, a typewriter genie in a, in a bottle or whatever, a genie in a lamp or a bottle. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, this would have been boring. I know. It would have been so different. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Well, that's the end. It was a long, it was a long, uh, a long mind your morals. Okay. So. Well, it was uh, good. Was, it was good talking to you about multivitamins um, and, and 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 golden morals. phonographs, multivitamins and morals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and wait, what was we opened up with some interesting thing about? I forget technology. It was, multi, know, it was it was multivitamins. That was Before it. I went into multivitamins, we talked about um, something. Oh, yeah. I forget. 
It was good. Man. It was it was okay. It was very average. I'm gonna have to <laughs> now. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to it so that I know what to write in the summary. Yeah, that's and okay. I don't you can mind. Do some, make it start with an M, so it's something multivitamins and morals. That's um, gonna that's be too title. long. I, that's gonna be too long. Yeah. I'll have to think of a different title. It might just be the Golden Phonograph. I don't know. I like it. Well, that was the pri- definitely the primary thing. All right. Well, I'm gonna go eat food and like you know okay, stuff yeah, like that. Make, make live, your excuses. Live my life. Make your excuses. I'm gonna go live my life as well. So okay. On that note, uh, we will we will close the episode. Yes. Good. Goodbye. Third da, space da, da, for now. Da, 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 da. The end. The end.